Hey, welcome back to Spence Shell Hunting Productions, where we're going to bring you another episode of cooking. Hopefully, during this pandemic and social distancing, you got the chance to get your fishing license and go out fishing. The way I understand it, all fishing license and uh, canoes and kayaks are at an all-time high uh, sale. So let's hope that you got your line wet, you got your uh, fishing rod out, you got your line wet, and you caught some fish. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go over something that uh, a lot of people ask me about. Um, they've caught uh, some fish, they caught some catfish, and they want to know how to prepare. How do I prepare catfish? And the big question there is, how do I make it taste good? It always tastes muddy to me. So stick around, stay tuned. We're going to talk about that. We're going to make some milk marinated, beer battered catfish. Stay tuned. So... To start out this recipe, obviously we're going to need to have four to five fillets of fish. Uh, we just happen to have catfish here. And basically what we did was we added, um, I added uh, just enough milk to cover the fish fillets themselves. Um, you can use regular milk or you can use buttermilk, whichever one you choose, it doesn't matter. Um, and the purpose of using the milk is the milk marinates the fish, it uh, tenderizes the fish, and it also sweetens the fish, so hence taking the muddy flavor out. Um, so there's your answer to, to a big question of how do I make catfish taste good? How do I get the muddy flavor out? That's how you do it. Uh, you only want to marinate it for like three to four hours, like I said, is uh, because if you want to marinate it overnight, you have to be careful. The uh, milk will work on it so much that it can actually turn the flesh mushy. So for the batter recipe, we're going to have one whole egg, we're going to have 12 ounces of beer, and we just happen to have a premium lager here uh, from Pennsylvania. It's a Yingling. Uh, lager makes a, is a nice uh, even flavor. You can use whatever beer you would like. Uh, we have 12 ounces of flour, which measures out to be about one and three-fourth cups. Uh, we got also are using one-fourth teaspoon of salt, one-fourth teaspoon of white pepper, one fourth teaspoon of granulated garlic and on top of the flour itself here I put one half teaspoon of baking powder and on the back here I have cornstarch for dusting and I'll explain what the cornstarch is for um, as we proceed in the video. So first things first we're going to take our catfish that's been marinating for three to four, uh, three to four hours, we're going to pull them out. We're going to lay them onto some paper towels. And what we're going to do, the reason that we're laying on these paper towels, is because we're going to dry them off. So that the, we can dust it with the cornstarch and the cornstarch will uh, make the batter stick. There you go, that's what the cornstarch is for. So we pull these up and we're going to lay the paper towel in here and just let the paper towel lay on top of it and let it just dry up that milk marinade and discard the milk marinade. Next, we're going to take our flour and we're going to add our flour to our bowl. We're going to add our spices. Take a whisk, mix it all up, we'll take another bowl, whisk our egg, add that to the flour. Cracker beer. Now don't drink it. If you want to drink one, open up another one. And add this right to our flour. Now the beauty about beer batter here is you might you want to choose your consistency, your thickness. You don't want it real thick that you can't coat the fish with it. And you don't want it so thin that it runs right off. 
So we see that foaming up, that's natural with the beer, and it's kind of reacting a little bit with the baking powder. Uh, I'm going to add the rest of our beer here. Now, you know, if, uh, if you want, uh, if it is a little bit too thick and you think it's a little bit too thick, you can always add just a little drop of water to a couple drops of water to it. But it really, this recipe is come out perfect almost every time. But you can use the excuse that you had to add a little more beer, crack another beer open, and then you'll have one to drink. So, so we get that all mixed up. And you can see the consistency here. Okay, It's kind of on the thickish side, but yet not too thick. So at this point, we're just about ready to... Uh, put our fish fillets into the batter and then into the uh, hot oil um, is I'm going to just sprinkle this and rather than dredge it I'm going to spread it around with my fingers just a little bit and I don't like to dredge it too much uh, because I don't like the uh, cornstarch has a tendency to really uh, coat the fish here so basically what we're doing here I'm going to say uh, again um, is that we are adding, putting the cornstarch on here because uh, the batter needs something to hold on to. Uh, if it onto the straight fish, it'll just roll right off. So we're going to coat each and every one of these front and back, smear it around, shake it off a little, and we're going to get the back of this one. Smear it around. This one needs a little more on the front. Good. Shake it off a little bit, put it on the plate, and get ready to batter dip it. So at this point, we're going to work real close to our oil. Now, I have taken a temperature of my oil. I heated it to 350 degrees, and you don't want 400. It cooks the uh, the batter, even if you're breading, uh, it cooks the breading and the batter too fast, and the inside of the fish uh, doesn't get done. Um, and that goes for any kind, like chicken, anything, the kind of stuff that you're doing. So we're going to grab this by the end of the tail. We're going to dip it right in. And it might be a little messy, but that's all right. We're going to let it very gently run off just a little bit. And then we're going to go straight into our hot oil. And if you notice, I'm not just throwing it in there. I'm very gently laying it in. And by doing that, if you throw it in and plop it, the hot oil splashes up on your fingers. Everybody's afraid they're going to get burned. They plop it in. And then they end up burning their fingers. And that's the reason why. So here we're going to go with our second one. And this gives the, as I slowly put it in, it gives the batter a chance to get a little bit of a crust on it before it, uh, before it hits the bottom and gives it the ability to float so that it doesn't stick to the bottom. I like to use my fingers and not a tongs. I'm sorry, a tongs because the tongs leave a spot where the batter doesn't get onto the fish. And by doing what I'm doing here, they will not stick together. So I've increased my heat just a little bit because whenever you put a food item into oil, the hot oil, um, it absorbs some of the, a lot of the heat. So basically my oil had dropped down to about 315 degrees. So I want to keep my temperature up, so I increased my heat just a little bit. And that will bring my oil back up to temperature. By frying at too low of a temperature um, has a, a, a different effect to it. Uh, you say, well, why don't you just do it at 275 or 300? Uh, because the oil is not hot enough to uh, make a crispy the crispy batter or to if you're doing breading to sear the breadcrumbs or to sear the batter 
um, and basically they'll get oily tasting. It will absorb some of the oil rather than making a crust right away. So right now we've uh, salt, we've fried for about a minute. We are ready to flip them. And the reason we want to flip them is so that they brown evenly and also so they cook evenly. Got my nice cast iron skillet there. And you can use any pot you like. You don't have to use cast iron. I just like to use the cast iron because it uh, holds the heat very evenly and very well. And you're getting a nice dose of your iron for the day. Oh man, they're looking good. It's making me hungry. So we want to check this fish and see if it's done or not. There's two ways to do this. We can take a thermometer, digital thermometer, like this. And we can insert it just into the thickest part, halfway in. And what we're looking for is you want to cook this to at least 145 to 150 degrees. So we are right at about 160. So we are done. The other way is to bring it out and to cut a little piece with the knife in the thickest part. Um, and to see if it's uh, cooked the whole way through. The way to tell if it's cooked the whole way through is um, if it is nice and, and ivory white the whole way through, or if it uh, if the middle is still like a, a milky looking opaque, it's not done. If it's a ivory white the whole way through and the flesh is solid, um, it, it is done. So all right, let's get these bad boys out of here, and we are going to go and we're going to have a plate it up. Hey, so here we go. Um, I put this on when I brought them out of the deep fryer. I put them on to uh, <clears throat> some paper towels here uh, to absorb any oil, but really there's hardly any oil on those on that paper towels because of our frying temperature. That's why it's so important to maintain a certain frying temperature. Um, it seals that batter or seals the breadcrumbs if you're doing something breaded, and it doesn't absorb the oil, therefore it doesn't uh, taste oily and it doesn't let all the oil out. So here we go, we're going to put this on the top of some greens, and it's beautiful, nice, oh my god, it looks fantastic. And we're going to serve it here with, a, we got a little bit of tomato on here for garnish, uh, a little bit of red color, and we've got three uh, sauces here. We've got our classic cocktail sauce, we got a classic tartar sauce, you can serve it with salsa, you can serve it with malt vinegar, or here's my favorite, just straight apple cider vinegar sprinkled over top, and oh man, is it delicious. So. Here you go, follow this recipe and you'll have the bragging rights. Uh, everybody will say, uh, man, that's the best catfish I ever tasted in my life. Are you sure you didn't uh, buy this? So you took the muddy taste out and it's going to be fantastic for you. So please like my video, subscribe to my channel. I, I need some subscribers to keep the channel going. And please pay some comments down in the comments. I look for comments. I've been getting a few, but I would really like to get some more.